so, so we're going to go through bathroom, uh, commercial bathroom drawings. And so we've got here some samples of skin work done in the past that was um, really good. Standard. So uh, I might start with Christie's. I think Christie's had the more conventional formatting. They're both okay, but this one has some uh, maybe the text size and use it off. So just maybe just zooming in so you can see a bit more. It's amazing. So before we get into the um, even the formatting, uh, you definitely need to look at the, the things you're trying to show on these plans and, uh, and make sure that, that those things that you show uh, follow all the standards. So you've got a few standards that you'll need to look at before going too far with the drawing. Uh, so maybe what's the first one? Just to remind you about drawing standards. Do you remember? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the one with all the things on line weight, symbols, AS 1100, past one. Um, I'm sure you've all had a look at that, but make sure if you haven't, that you're aware of it and that you do at least uh, reference it. Um, so then when you get into, uh, well, the one on the right there, the one that's been tapped, what's that? No, no. No, the tiles go throughout, so it's hacked because it's um, been treated separately. It's not actually shown in your set of drawings, but you still would need to show it. So, but what is it? I'm not starting really to be technical, but what is that room? Because they would access that site. Right. So, where do you find the standards for disabled access bathrooms? Which Australian standards? Do you need to reference for those requirements for the table access bathroom? I don't blame you for not remember all the numbers. You will as you start to use them more. But uh, you should at least know that there is a standard for this and be able to look it up. 1428? No? 1428.1. There are several 1428s. Okay, so I'll, I'll bring them up. So I have downloaded a whole set of them for you, but remember they expire, so we'll need to keep coming back to them. What is one here? One you use all the time. Yeah. yeah. Probably the most commonly referenced standard. So there is the 2014 amendment. Yeah, there has been a new one, so I'll go and check that. So maybe it's a good chance to go over and download the standard. It seems like you haven't done a lot of that so far, but so you do have to do a lot more these days than ever in the past. So I'll let you tell me this. How do we get a Jane standard? Or how do you get them if you're not a student? Yeah, no, you, oh yeah, so you're right. In, in a student, you know, in the library. So I'm just trying to make it clear to you how good that is for you because Ordinarily, you've got a paper. But as students, you get free access to all these Australian standards. So, and, and as I was saying, the library. So if you go here, important services, library services, and now where do you go? Have any of you done it? No? How do you get by without Australian standards? Oh, okay, well, you've got the standards there. So, uh, yeah, when you start working and uh, you've got to make sure a job complies, the BCA is not enough because it doesn't really tell you much detail anymore. And you stay a lot more. That's right, yeah. Exactly, that's it. So, yeah, the, the BCA is good to find out which standards to look at, but they don't want to tell you, uh, give you much detail because they want to to get that from the standard. So all I did there, you missed it, I clicked on e-resources. So I took them to this tab, and then I basically clicked on the same thing again. Paper and stuff you live with A to Z, e-resources, e-resources. Then where do we go? We can get this one. Well, there's two options, you think. A for Australian standards, or uh, F for S standards S Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So F for standards online, and then you log in again with your username. And I 
and uh, a lot of people when they are about to graduate just finally do log into this and uh, download every sense they can, not realising they'll look forward to fire in a couple of months anyway. Okay, so what was the standard for disabled access? 1428. So we'll search for that. AS 1428. And it's going to give us a big list. When it's working. Oh, I wasn't going to be doing this. Yeah, when it does this, oh, it's going to go the other way. No, no, it's a, um, it's a problem with the subscription. Yeah, the library guys just last time. Yeah, but also the way you go in makes a difference. So if Which one? The other one? Oh awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you want to look some people gotta work in but not the most yeah, yeah, uh, here we go. So try I'm gonna try logging in a different way. It's to do with the way you log in, it's one of those things and there is a subscription manager who apparently looks after all of this and he fixed it, but obviously they've changed something else and we've got to we do that again. So I'm trying to use Internet Explorer, that's one option. And if I didn't get it, it's wrong. Right. Yeah. There's another way to go into it that, that can be split better, but I'll try this. The other way is harder. Okay, So normally it does work, but I think we have to give up on that because I don't want to show you the work around it. Um, it's really complicated. So we've got, oh here we go, it's now working. Okay, so maybe it's going to get started. This, oh did you get this work? You couldn't get this. Yeah. Okay, let's start. So, um, so I'm just going to download the one that we've already got again. So it's uh, this one. Ah, oh, no, that's that's all. Here, yeah, ah, uh, no, that's the one. Maybe not the right one. This is not the right one for anyone. Yeah, let's start. Okay, yeah, I think it's it's just not smart. Yeah, it looks like it's not working, but I reckon it's too late. So the dust day is loading. Yeah, it still says it's loading. So I might leave that running, but um, I'm just going to go and open the stand. So fortunately, this one is one that doesn't expire. Pretty sure. when you get it to download. Um, try that link again because it should be better later. I'm going to talk to the library people and see if they can check it. But uh, I'll be pretty sure it will come up in the end. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, so it does come up. you just got to wait for it. Yeah, it just takes time. So, yeah, with this, this next thing, it'll just take time. I've seen this ever before. This is the tactile one anyway. It's not the right one, but um, it works. I'll leave that running and uh, 
So this is uh, the main standard though. So if you haven't already looked at this standard, you need to. To do the work in interior design, you need to be pretty familiar with, with basically all of this standard. Uh, especially the parts on, um, on floor and ground surfaces, walkways and ramps, tactile uh, ground surface indicators. Do you know what they are? So tactile, what does tactile mean? To the touch. Right? So it's the things on the ground that indicate when people are uh, walking across them, the bumps, the little nodules you see at train stations and at the top and the bottom of the stairs, uh, often on the stairs now as well, uh, on ramps uh, as well, to indicate people mostly with vision impairments um, that they're uh, coming across some change in level, um, or you know, the change in the So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, So you need to look up the requirements. So, okay, so it's one of those important changes that's come about in the last few years. And uh, so, yeah, when you have, especially when you've got red, but also stairs, uh, in certain situations, you've got to read through the requirements and see when you need to indicate tactile. Uh, ground services. Yeah, well, that's the front side of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's on the front side. Yeah, and you've got to check up even when they're quiet. And um, so you'll see them, you would have all seen them at train stations now, uh, shopping centres, all over the place. Uh, so you've got to check that requirement, you've got to check through the standards. So then walkways and ramps, really important as well. Whenever you do a ramp, you've got to check this if it's a required ramp for disabled access. But even for non-required ramps, there are requirements for the grade of the ramp. Something not clear. The other place to look, well, do you know the other place to look for requirements for ramps apart from this standard? What if it's a ramp that's not required for disabled access? Where you look more uh, just for normal building control. So people forget that. I know a lot of people who only know this one and they forget that the normal ramps that are not required for disabled access is in the NCC, the BCA, and um, it, it's quite similar. It's one in eight. And you'll see in here it talks about one in eight ramps, which are um, uh, an option in very limited situations, but normally they've got to be um, about one in 14 and it goes up. But anyway, so you've got to have some familiarity with the standards to know uh, where all these things are. And then what we're really looking at is sanitary facilities, and bathrooms really, and so you've got all the requirements for that, and uh, it's, it's really detailed. So you need to read through all of it and get familiar with that. But then for the design of your disabled access bathrooms, they do have some templates that give you most of the requirements. You can't just rely on these, but they're a good, um, good place to start probably a lot easier to understand than reading through several pages of explanation. But you still should read through that. I've designed many disabled bathrooms and um, and I don't always just follow this template. You can vary that quite a lot. And you'll be told when you have to. Uh, and so then there's some more uh, some examples as well. If you go towards up the slide at the end, it does have some example bathrooms that comply. So, uh, some of them, sure they had a small, maybe they'd take it out, they just have to do some fancy drawings. I think they've actually done it pretty easily, they've done it. Yeah, it looks like you'll see they've got some examples, I'm pretty sure. But uh, I might just come back to this one, that's a pretty good template for the layout.
yeah, let's go, go through it. Uh, that is, that's the template for um, full uh, wheelchair access. And, but, but there are other ways of doing it. Yeah, but that won't need to a tower. But yeah, yeah, there is one with, with the tower up there. Uh, it's got the tower requirements. But then also they've got different requirements for people with different disabilities. And then, um, uh, where's the other one? So, yeah, they do have one with the tower, but that's probably not as important. And the shower is more for residential anyway. Right, and also not for wheelchair either, normally. Well, they're taking the, yeah, they're taking the example now. They might be somewhere else. Maybe they, oh, maybe they're back here. Uh, yeah, they did have, there did be three examples. But, uh, maybe they're just, oh, here we go, here's this. Yeah, here's the one. So, here's another example. Because, you know, that, that template that I showed you is, is just that. It's not saying this is how you need to always do the layout. And you find in a real world design situation, you'll often need to do the layout quite differently. So you might want the basin, the basin might need to be on another side. They can't always be opposite the WC. And so you need to look at their clearances and to go right to the other clearances not required around the basin, clearances under the basin, and uh, so you can't have vanity units under the basin, you've got to have leg clearance under the air basin, and uh, a lot of other things behind the door, the door needs to be a certain size, and again the door might not always be able to be on the side that it's shown in that first template, it's going back there. So for yours, if you're going to use the existing disabled access button, go back to that, um, you still need to check the blow. Uh, yeah, so I think it's just clear, you've got to go through those requirements. And then, going back to the drawings, apart from the, um, where are Okay, so apart from the disabled access code, W, you know, AS 1428, point one, make sure you realise there are several others. Put the hat open. Yeah, that's right. It's the accessibility standard. But then you've got others. Um, here we go, finally. Yeah, so this is taking time. So I can download this one. This is another one. This is just the tactile indicator. Right, so yes, there are several Australian standards on disabled access that uh, cover things other than just um, the accessible requirements for bathrooms and ramps and things. And they take up with things. I have downloaded most of them, so in the folder there you'll see you can actually look at some of the others. Might be another Australian standard that you need to 
look at. What about water person? The fast one? Pretty important. So wet areas is what we're looking at generally. So for wet areas, I always forget the number, but it's in the name here. Here we are. That's it. So 3740 is the Australian standard for water person. Oh, that's domestic, so commercial is different, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. I'll check this, but I'm pretty sure that's the domestic one. There's no one look up. It's, yeah, the requirements are the same, pretty much, yeah. But they've got to, uh, I think they do have a different number for the um, commercial one. Ah, oh, come on, baby. But if you think it's tedious, uh, you're not alone, uh, but it's just the way the industry is. And I've talked to a lot of architects um, who are doing building work all the time, uh, who uh, just you know, spend the whole weekend complaining to me about all the stems they have to bring up. If you think this is bad, when you start doing a real project, you'll get certified asking you for a little bit of a hundred stems. That's not unusual. Um, that's, that's just the way the world works. So the the certifiers, the people who you know, give you the construction certificate to say you can start building, um, they will ask you for all these required standards and also for a documentation that proves you're complying with them. So you need to start getting familiar with them. And this one is for interior design, one of the standards that you refer to constantly. I'm just going to flip through some of the pages that are going to be more meaningful for you. So it's all to do with waterproofing, mostly behind piles. And so this is all the detail uh, that the waterproofing and the piles to deal with. But then You'll see the path that you need to go on your drawing coming up. Uh, is that it? Yes, okay. So, so you know what this one is probably better there. What this means, just for a shower. You may not need to do a shower, but you'll see in a bit of things you will need to do. Uh, but this one's very clear and you might make it a bit more obvious why they have these requirements. Uh, so it's showing the minimum extent of waterproofing around the shower. That's something you'd all be familiar with, and it makes sense. You don't want water to be able to go onto tiles that aren't fully waterproof. Uh, well, it's not just tiles, but um, any wet area. And so there's a distance from the shower to the edge of the waterproofing membrane. And that's a legal requirement to have that. I don't know why it wasn't always a legal requirement, but apparently it was. So bars are quite similar, so you've got to go up a certain distance from the bar. If there's no shower there, I think it's just one fifty. Which I'm always amazed because flashing in a bar, you're going to go higher than one fifty. Uh, that's, that's the requirement. And then around the joint. And the one that would be most relevant to you is for hand bases. So that's further down, there we are, hand bases. Again, only one fifty above the hand bases. 
But so you think this is what people do when they build a bathroom now, build the membrane to follow those requirements? Oh no, they definitely will. I mean, they'll get sued if they don't. Um, so no, they definitely would at least do that. But in reality, most people do a lot more. They go well beyond this and just want to push the whole thing to hold. That's the standard practice now. And it's easier. And it gives you a much better result. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, commercial, you just build without anything. You just want to push the whole thing. It's much easier. You don't want leaks in a commercial building. Uh, it's just uh, uh, unacceptable. So, yeah, I know, it is. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, so I think they were looking at, you know, project home builders maybe saving some money because they might do it to the minimum. But uh, they're quite else to do it, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. So you need to think about the water pressure requirements, but also maybe decide if it's worth um, going beyond those minimum requirements and probably assume that it is. And, uh, and, and indicate that in your drawings. It is a legal requirement that you indicate waterproofing on your drawings. Uh, so that's probably enough for the standards, even though I'm sure if you look in the NCC, it will list other Australian standards that you should look at. And then we can just look at some of the drawing conventions and go through how you can set up some of those drawings. So coming back to some of the drawing setup. Um, okay, so we've got uh, this part plan of bathroom. So what scale do you think that should be? I've already mentioned it. I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly, 1 to 20. Yeah. Okay. So you can assume that. 1 to 20 is the standard scale for part plans of a bathroom. And the elevation should be the same scale as well. If it's a very small bathroom, you might do a 1 to 10. But again, generally 1 to 20 is good. Uh, what do you think the dash, sorry, the, the bubble thing going around, everything there is? So this set of wavy lines. So you can see here, looks a bit like a cloud. What do you think that is? It's not actually relevant to bath. It's not just the bathroom. You'll see this. You'll see this on lots of different drawings. But just so you know what you're looking at. When you see that, it is called a cloud. A certain type of cloud. Revision cloud. So that's indicating that there's been a revision there. When you see that. So just so it's clear. So that's not anything specific to the bathroom. So there were some changes to these drawings, and this is indicating where the changes were. Yeah. Yeah, so these dimensions in this case, the revision cloud goes in there. Oh, yeah, that's, well, no, that's, that's to the um, to the detail. Yeah, that's not to the revision mode. Yeah. So, no, they haven't, they haven't waived. I don't think you see um, notice of revision, personal revision. Yeah, now that, they should be noted. So the way you note a revision is you put an amendment reference. So it might be Amendment A, and you put little A, and then that would tie into your title block. So you list your revisions. I don't think you did that though. But at least you put the revision cloud. Here you can see it's issue B, so there should have been a little thing on there. There might be, I'm just maybe a bit hurt. A, yeah. Oh, maybe it's from A. But see, it shouldn't be there then. If it's from A, you take it off on the next revision. Yeah, so the key there is that you're indicating all the fixtures, you're indicating the floor. There's one important thing that you missed here actually, but I'll tell you that in a minute, or you might know. Um, the, the dimensions should only be for the things inside the bathroom, but you should dimension all new, uh, particularly all new partitions. Now, one thing I always get uh, hung up on, just because I've dealt with buildings a lot on this, you reckon you should indicate um, where the toilets are, like this. It's not too bad, I suppose, but uh, it could have been clearer. And it's sometimes they can not really indicate the wall. Yeah, no, yeah, that's right. The position, so from this one, the position of the WC from the edge of the wall there has been indicated. Yeah, well, it should be centred, but also it, it's not always. Um, and, uh, and sometimes they can let the plumbers. That. If you indicate the cubicle size, it 
you then specify the position and you're wrong, because it's quite a hard thing to work out sometimes, but plumbing do that for a living, um, it's better letting it for them. Depends. But uh, yeah, because it's quite specific and um, sometimes, yeah, yeah, if you're not sure. Um, I don't know if you did, see this is not even centered. So 425 and then 900. Now that could be correct, because again, it comes down to the way that the, um, the chart does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it varies. But um, anyhow, if you, if you can even cut if you want to, you just make sure you get it right. So, so where do you think you find the information on the way the toilet connects to the um, to the drain to the to the connection? So where do you find all that information on how your toilet connection works? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, the manufacturer specification. They'll give you all the detailed drawings. If you look hard enough, you'll find the most detailed drawings you've ever need. Far more than you need to turn your drawings in. And um, it's a brilliant thing. So, loan that, give it all out, cola, um, all those people can make stuff and give you all of those drawings, fully detailed, and you just copy them. But again, you'll see when you read through it all, um, they do tell you where the plumbers will maybe you'll be able to work things out a bit more than you can because they know the, all the faults and things that you can do. So sometimes it's better living it to them and don't over specify what I'm saying. Uh, common mistake. But uh, obviously it's half the time it's the plumbers are decent and they realise you've made a mistake up. So you don't even get to wait Um Yeah, so, yeah, but, but the key thing is you list all the fittings. You should label them too. You should do that WC, correct the read. And then, what do you say to these things? What are they? Uh, so should we label them? Let's see what they are. It's pretty obvious to be what they are, but they should always be labelled. Yeah, we've got the mixer, uh, you know, the basin. Yeah, well, it says basin. So yeah, you should label those as basin, can basin, really. And this is obviously clean up, so they're very communal there. So, that's okay. But, uh, oh yeah, there's, uh, there's a few issues there as well. So the way that the petition goes there, maybe there was a reason for that, but I don't know if that's necessary, having the um, petition going up against the wall. Otherwise, it's I mean, and then the other thing, so the previous picture we had shown was um, uh, very upset with having this sort of um, button, so he wanted to have leashes up behind each toilet. So there's, you know, about 400 high or so with the button on top. Inside. Yeah, yeah, inside that ledge. It's the old way of doing it. Do you think that's common nowadays? It's the old fashioned way. It actually creates a lot more work. And he used he, he, he to do the better things that then he liked it. Because I suppose you could have a couple of slabs of marble and make it look more granite or whatever, make it look expensive. But um, I, I actually think it looks a bit stated personally, so it's more of a style thing. And um, I just have to have a flush and then... Yeah. And if you know about the system, the, the wall mounted systems now, they can be less than 100. So you can get them in with your wall frame and then do whatever wall things you like and you can do, you know, flat and granite or something if you want to do yeah, you don't have to do those. But, yeah, John was for those things. Um, so I don't think Caitlin did those, no Caitlin did them on the wall. But she was honestly this black right there, she should have shown the um, the system inside the wall. Otherwise pretty good. But like I said, there's a few issues with the formatting because the, the door numbers are way too big and then the other text is uh, a bit small. But we can at least look at the referencing there because she's used one approach to referencing. And this we use a different approach, I think. Yeah. So Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's how they do it. Yeah. 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 I don't think she's out of it, no. Maybe yeah, you might make one. Yeah, here we go, yeah. So it's still double off. Yeah, which is not um, in reality, the commercial bathroom, do you think that's an appropriate 
today, we're going to be talking about toilet rolls, but uh, I'm not going to go into the right of the bus, but <laughs> if anyone's been fun. Yeah, so we went out for a while. Yeah, I don't want to say fun. Yeah, I should not tell you, but around here, all the time. Yeah, so, but, but if you think that's a good one for this sort of bathroom, would they use that in real life? I mean, you've, all, you've all been in commercial bathrooms, you've got some here. So what do they do now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's an option. Yeah, so it's all set up for people doing facility management, so they can come and replace them easily, and it's all done to the scale stuff. So the ones with the two different sizes, they do that so that they um, get the space in a different way. And then the big one, the small one. It's meant to be that you use the big one up and the small one to back up. So people end up using the small one, I think, and then the big one becomes the back up. But either way, they get changed at different rates, so they're not meant to run out at the same time. That's the idea. So those bigger commercial ones are better than these stainless steel things that, you know, they really did in the past. But that's up to you. So you've got to specify all those things, even if it's for the existing bathroom. And it's a good chance to do some interior design and, you know, find some nice expensive stuff. The Dyson things, if you want to, or you can even get nicer hand dryers than that now. The other Dyson ones that go to the sink or whatever, you can look for all that. And it's just a specification. You don't need to do even the most useless drawing of them. Uh, Sign for them accurately, but the main thing is to specify those things. So, so again, these were, were some of the better uh, bathroom drawings done by previous students. This is all I can yeah. So, what do you think they've missed? There's a very obvious thing that both of them miss. Both Christy and Taylor, who are both excellent students. And great design, actually. This is great design. So, something very obvious, though, that you would all think about, even for domestic bathrooms, and but definitely commercial critical thing. So, oh, you should indicate those. We'll get on the elevations, yeah? We'll show them in the elevation. So, what? The difference with the, or what's the main requirement for a wet area that you don't have in other spaces? What makes it possible to be a wet area? Yeah, the waterproofing, so then the water's got to go somewhere though. A drain, you've got to have a floorway. They didn't indicate in the floorway. That's really important. That's probably one of the most important things you should indicate on these drawings. So I'm going to show you some options for doing those as well. We'll click over to Revit and we'll look at all that stuff. Okay, so I know a lot of that here, but these things you, you learn by you know, doing, and I learned, you know, from probably a million times, my first big job was a big government building, and um, I had to do all the ceilings, and then the next thing was all the bathrooms. And I learned that really well, uh, and I had the project manager as well, so I was down there talking with the builders and the plumbers and the tiles and everyone else, and um, mostly because, you know, they'll be surprised, suddenly a 24 year old. You know, telling me 50 year old guy to do exactly what to do, and then some 24 year old in very little was supposed to be telling them, and uh, it was really good to do that talk what I should be doing. Uh, so that's a really good way to learn, but you can still learn it by doing the drawings. And here we've got the bathroom, which we'll detail much more later. So I just want to start by getting a part plan of the bathroom. So even if you don't have the layout done like this, no, I'll just use this area. But if we don't have the layout done, like I've got a bear, I'm going to hide this. Uh, so, yeah, that's right, that's what I'm going to do now. So, okay, so even if I didn't have the tiles and the cubicles and the hand bases on, no, but you, but you would still need to add detail. You might have a, have you got a basic layout for it? No. Yeah, it's, it's your intro, yeah, it's your intro, it's everything. Oh, right, so then you're, oh, good, good, so that means you'll be forced to draw the things over the top to get some top of the drawings. You won't be able to just get the, the AutoCAD extracted yeah. because it won't give you the elevation. Even if you 
planning on using AutoCAD, you want to be able to export those things from Revit as a starting point, unless you want to draw them all from scratch in AutoCAD, up to you, but easier to get the starting point from Revit. So, yeah, so that's good actually, so you're going to be forced, even if you have the AutoCAD base plan there, to so model up these things over the top of the Revit, and you'll show you all know about the things like the, you know, the 30 mil toilet position wall, so it's a wall that you would all have in your template when you start a Revit file, that thing. So you use that, 30 mil toilet position. Oh yeah, I'll just show call out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, they're getting close to another. Okay, so I'll and I'll do the rest of the So, okay, so I'll come back to some tips for drawing the bathroom things, but I really just want to show you call out. So even without all of that, as long as we know the room that we're trying to show, you go to the view tab, and then call out is right there. You can do any shape you like now with Revit, but I'm going to start with rectangle. And then click and drag to make your rectangular shape, or sorry, no, click and then click. Right. And then you get the um, reference there, which you can move. This is probably come up in a good spot. And then to open the view, you can always right click on it and go to the view. And you'll see it simply makes another floor plan with call out whatever right. at the end of the night. That's it. That is. And so notice that my original floor plan was 1 to 200, and then this call out, call out 1, is drawn to 1 to 100, but you can still need changes to 1 to 20. That's it. So we'll go into making elevations and other things from there after you have a break, maybe. Uh, yeah, I promised the guys downstairs I'd let you get there before they close, so I'll do that. <laughs>